The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you here. The, the reason that you're not hearing Beth right now is uh, they've got a uh, new addition to their daughter's family. Starting <laughs> And probably according to their daughter, Grace, not a moment too soon. <laughs> so, because everybody has a baby here yet. Obviously, it wasn't. Now, they're about, they're about on their way. Are there announcements to be made this morning? Yes. <laughs> and what, how many years have we done that? <laughs> yeah, we, we. <laughs> Other announcements. Next to Easter Sunday, one of my favorite Sundays is the Holy Humor Sunday, which is next Sunday. And there will be another unity service at 10 o'clock, just, just like today. No other announcements? I think we should say thanks to number and all the yes. head coordinate the breakfast directory. <laughs> Is there any left down there, Amber? <laughs> For the past six weeks, we focused on how, by God's grace, we can stop trying to climb ladders of perpetual achievement and even bigger success and tend the garden of love, relationship, and growing faith right around us. We've learned over and over again that this tending, cultivating, and growing deep right where we are is good enough, and God calls it good. Today, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we celebrate the new life offered to us. The victory Christ had over death and evil, our invitation to walk in newness of life. Let us join in together for the call to worship. Lord God, early in the morning, when the world was young, you made life in all its beauty and terror. You gave birth to all that we know. Holy is your name. Holy, Holy is your name. name. Early in the morning, when the world least expected it, a newborn child crying in a cradle announced that you had come among us, that you were one of us. Holy is your name. Holy is your name. Early in the morning, surrounded by respectable liars, religious leaders, anxious political leaders, and silent friends, you accepted the penalty for doing good, for being God. You shouldered and suffered the cross. Holy is your name. Holy is your name. Early in the morning, a voice in a guarded graveyard and footsteps in the dew provided proof, proof that you had risen, that you had come back to those and for those who had forgotten, denied, and destroyed you. Holy is your name. Holy is your name. This morning in the multicolored company of your church on earth and in heaven, we celebrate your creation, your life, your death and resurrection, your interest in us, so we pray. Lord, bring new life where we are one and tired. New life where we have turned hard-hearted. Forgiveness where we feel hurt and where we have wounded. And the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit where we are prisoners of ourselves, 
in the, the empty, empty tomb, tomb you, you give to us again and again, and again the right to begin again. again. Thanks be to God. Let's stand for the first hymn. down. Not that important. All right, so normally this would be the time where we have our prayer of confession and assurance of pardon. Um, we're not going to do that today. Yeah. <laughs> Next week, be back. We'll do it. I promise. Um, the thing is, is our joy at Easter is so huge, and God's grace for us in Jesus Christ is so complete, we don't have a confession on this day. But again, next week, you can. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Will you pray with me? Living God, with joy, we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading today is from 1 Corinthians 15, 19 through 26. If we have a hope in Christ only in this life, then we deserve to be pitied more than anyone else. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He's the first crop of the harvest of those who have died. Since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead came through one, too. In the same way that everyone dies in Adam, so also everyone will be given life in Christ. 
Each event will happen in the right order. Christ, the first crop of the harvest, then those who belong to Christ at his coming, and then the end when Christ hands over the kingdom to God the Father, when he brings every form of rule, every authority and power to an end. It is necessary for him to rule until he puts all enemies under his feet. Death is the last enemy to be brought to an end. The word of God for the people of God. Again, Pastor Beth's not here, so it's a new challenging time as I get to lead kids time. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some cool tricks. All right. Yeah, we will. All right. What up, Ben? All right, so do you guys know what today is? Easter. 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 Yeah, everybody got it. Good job. Marks all around. And is today a happy day or a sad day? Happy. Happy day? Do we know why it's happy? Because it's Easter. Jesus rose. Jesus rose. All right, so I'm going to show you a really cool trick because uh, all these that are older than you, they've kind of been preconditioned to this, but watch this. <clears throat> the Lord is risen. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Did you did you hear did you hear that? We get to say something, they have to say something back. Yeah. See the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. It's pretty fun. Oh, we're gonna have a turn because the next thing we get to do since Pastor Beth's not here is make a mess. So we have these fun eggs. You know what they are? What are they? They are fruit bangs. You are. You guys are so right. So here's what we're gonna do. Everybody is gonna get a chance to crack an egg, to throw it on the ground, and get to say, "The Lord is risen." You guys ready? Okay. All right. Who's going first? Me. That's the first hand I see. So stand up. Do you remember what to say? Yeah, you say the Lord is all right. So smash it down, be real happy, and say it. The Lord. Oh, that's awesome! All right, your turn, man. I love him. He's not Jesus. Don't point at him. <laughs> He is risen indeed. Okay, okay. Get down on the ground, Bennett. Stand on, stand on the ground. All right. Now throw it on the ground and say, the Lord is risen. Say it. He is risen indeed. All right, here you go, man. Give it a good one. Say it loud. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. All right, Caroline, you ready? Super big, super excited, super loud. The Lord is risen. It is risen indeed. All right, guys, thank you for helping me out. Don't worry, we'll get this cleaned up later. But right now, you guys can go with Miss Brianna and do the child care. No. <laughs>
The stone is rolled away. Hallelujah. The stone is rolled away. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen from the grave. The stone is rolled away. The stone is rolled away. Hallelujah. The stone is rolled away. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen from the grave. The stone is rolled away. The stone is rolled away, hallelujah, 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 the stone is rolled away. Hallelujah, the stone is rolled away. Hallelujah, the stone is Hallelujah, the stone is rolled away. The stone is rolled away. The stone is rolled away. Early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple left to go to the tomb. They were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and was the first to arrive at the tomb. Bending down to take a look, he saw them uh, the linen clothes lying there, but he didn't go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloth lying there. He also saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus' head. It, it wasn't with the other clothes, but was folded up in its own place. Then the other disciple, the one who arrived at the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Jesus was buried in a garden. I tend for, to forget that with the suspense, the intensity of the resurrection, Kate Bowler, who wrote the book that we've been using this Lent, Good Enough, has a devotion called A Good Gardener. And we've adapted it to share with you this morning. There was a proud British gardener who raised snowdrops. These fragile, beautiful flowers don't bloom the first year they're planted, and sometimes not even the second year. But the gardener, a man named Steve Owen, tended one plant 
for 14 years before the first flower appeared on the plant. When the plant finally produced its delicate white blooms, Steve Owens shouted, Hallelujah! Gardening is a fundamentally hopeful thing. Gardeners are able to envision new life in the midst of despair and death. They weed and seed, mulch and prune, and sometimes they get in one flower for their work. The very act of gardening is one of hope. This is exactly the kind of hope that a woman went to a garden looking to find, not expecting to find, on that first Easter morning. Kate writes, the sun hasn't peaked over the horizon yet. The greenish haze of the moon offers barely enough light to move about. And according to John's gospel, Mary Magdalene's awake. Grief does that to you. The day stretches into night. The moon chases the sun into day again. The circadian rhythm cannot win against the restless of an unsettled mind or a broken heart. Days before, Mary's beloved friend and teacher was murdered. The Sabbath meant burial preparation had to be left unfinished. And as soon as the clock released her, Mary made her way back to the tomb. But when she arrived, the stone had, had moved, had been moved. J Jewish custom took seriously the first seven days of grieving. So to strip people from enacting final acts of love would have been a cruelty to fragile mourners. Even Gentile grave robbers would have left the body behind out of respect. She takes off to find Peter and John who confirm her fear. The body is missing, and yet the bed has been made. The pieces of cloth that swaddled him are perfectly folded in his stead. Undone by the layered grief, the men don't linger, but head home. First, they lost their teacher and friend. Now his body has been desecrated. It is too much for anyone to bear. I wonder if they try to get Mary to come along, to leave this place of death and get some sleep. The bags under her bloodshot eyes must have given away her exhaustion. But instead, she stays, posted at the last place she saw Jesus, like a soldier keeping watch. John writes in chapter 20, Mary stood outside near the tomb crying. As she cried, she bent down to look into the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. The angels asked her, woman, why are you crying? She replied, they have taken away my Lord and I don't know where they've put him. As soon as she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Kate Bohr continues. She peers inside the tomb again. This time it isn't empty, but she doesn't see who she is looking for. Two people dressed in white sit where Jesus once lay. Why are you crying? A rather heartless question to ask in a cemetery. Heaving through sobs, she tells them what's wrong. They've taken him. Then turning to leave, she nearly bumps into a man with dirt under his fingernails. He too asks her, why are you crying? Through tear-blurred blur eyes, she mistakes him for the gardener and begs him to tell her where Jesus' body lies. What a strange detail. The resurrected Christ is mistaken for a gardener. Maybe it's because he stole the gardener's clothes since he, since his, since his were stripped away in gambling. Maybe because where Jesus was crucified was a garden. 
a tiny, beautiful detail that reminds us that death is never too far from new life. Maybe Jesus looks like his dad, the first gardener who tended Eden barefoot. Maybe Jesus looks like the new Adam, the head gardener for the new Eden of the new heavens and the new earth. Maybe it's because he carries the pruning shears of a vine dresser, the careful tender of our souls, ready to pluck and plant, uproot and cut back. Maybe he looks ready to cultivate new life, to pull us toward resurrection with his fingers digging in among the worms. Or maybe this gardener looks like he knows something about hope, hope that Mary desperately needs. A gardener knows the kind of hope it takes to sow a seed in the ground, to cover it with manure, to bury it in the cold winter dirt surrounded by naked trees, to leave it for months, trusting that with the magic amount of water and air and time, Something new will be born out of a single seed. A seed doesn't taste very good or have any real nutritional value. It really has no purpose until it's planted by a good gardener. Yet inside a tiny seed is all the genetic information needed to grow a complete plant. And under the right conditions, this tiny speck will sprout and root, bud, and bloom. What grows might provide food, shelter, or simply awe? Sometimes a giant sequoia or a bush weighted with juicy raspberries or a flamboyant peony. But the first step to creating life from this insignificant genetic package, you must bury it. A seed reaches its potential only when it's buried. When things look most lost, most dark, most covered, most long gone, and most hopeless, that's when the seed is undergoing the most important change. Through its death, it might produce much fruit. Seeds must be buried, but some need even more drastic circumstances to allow for new life, to burst through that thick seed coat. Some need to be exposed to almost freezing temperatures before they will germinate. Sequoia seeds germinate only when burnt. Some seeds balloon with water before they finally burst open. Some, when they are kept in pitch black for a long time. Hard-shelled seeds must be scarred, cracked, mainly broke open. Some need to be eaten by an animal and re released. And still others may sit dormant for several years before something mysterious triggers them to sprout. And that first burst of life that breaks through the seed, uh, through the seed coat after it has been buried, is called the radical. This gardener knows the hope it takes to believe that through the death, the freezing, the fire, the floods, the darkness, the crushing, the consumption, the waiting, even there, new life can be born. This is the radical moment of new life bursting forth from seeming death. Gardeners are delighted, yes, but not surprised. They know what can grow out of the cold, hard winter ground. And while spring may be predictable to gardeners, re resurrection is not. The gardener knows something about that, though. Mary doesn't recognize that the gardener is Jesus, not until he calls her by name. Like a gardener who can name every variation of plant growing in his plot, what is it about this voice that feels so recognizable? What is it about your name on a familiar tongue that feels so comforting? Finally, Mary notes, Rabuni, she exclaims, the, uh, she exhales the weight of despair. My dearest teacher. Thinking he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you, have if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will give get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. 
She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, don't hold on to me, for I haven't yet gone up to my father. But go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I'm going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Continuing from Kate Bowler, maybe this is what it means to be an Easter person, to see Christ and think, Gardner, not as a mistaken identity, but as a prophetic one. The seed in the ground, the body in the tomb, this is a picture of defiant hope. All of the labor and sweat and love and precious time for a single bloom, delicate and bold, brief, but memorable. Friends, this gardening God, this resurrected Jesus, gives that kind of love and tending and care for us. He is still watching over us, tending to our growth when it seems we are buried and cold and there's no sign of spring. He is still the one who calls out new life from among and within us, inviting us to join in the miracle of transformation and reconciliation. And so we say it again and again, the Lord is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. discuss a moment for generosity. Think of all the gifts that we're, we've been given and uh, use that as a reminder to use our talents, our money, all of our gifts to honor our God. His friends shout, shout with joy once they heard his voice again. And so we join our voices with all God's creatures, high and low, with all Jesus' friends from long ago and here and now to sing your praises. Receive our joyful praise today, Lord Jesus. You rose from the dead to show us that there are new possibilities for us in our lives also. Even when we're sad or discouraged and forget your love, you don't turn away from us. You open up your arms to catch us in a hug. You invite us to share in your redeeming and reconciling work in the world. Lord Jesus, on this happy Easter day, 
we raise our voices to sing our joy aloud. Spirit, you make new life rise in us and around us. Breathe upon us now and make us ever more aware of the love of Jesus Christ. Help us to trust that all things will work together for good through the power of God's love that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. In the joy of resurrection, in the joy of new life, we lift our voices together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is now. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now. Amen. Stand. risen Lord goes with us out into the world. Alleluia. Alleluia. 